Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Juan Londoño and today we are discussing the topic why I believe film is back stronger than ever. So we've seen some car manufacturers talking about how they're not going to get rid of manual transmission altogether after all, like they thought they might. Some are bringing it back. Um, we've also seen LPs, what we call LPs or records, record players coming back. Stores like Walmart are now selling LPs for a lot more than when I was a kid and used to buy them, of course, but they're back. 80s pop and classic rock are starting to show up in shirts that teenagers are wearing without them really understanding what they're wearing. But even the music is now on the airwaves. So you got to wonder if all these industries are doing it, why not photography? Why not bring back film? Why should photography be any different? So the, question, the first question we have to ask ourselves is why? Why is any of this happening? Why would photography bring back film? Why would we even be interested in this, right? And there's a very logical reason, and it's called control. Now, not the type of control where you beat your chest and you say, I am in control. No, it has nothing to do with it. It's more of a creative control. See, if we look at a painter, for example, right? Back in the day, people had to mix dyes from like, uh, beets and flowers and and if they wanted those colors that was fine but sometimes they didn't have a color they had to mix colors that was part of the creative process right when paints came around <clears throat> that was one level of creativity that was removed or one level of control that was removed right kind of um, synonymous here so painters could now buy the paints they needed right if they wanted to save money and they wanted to be creative, they would buy the, you know, the three or four main colors and then they would create. Uh, so they still had the ability of being creative, but they didn't have to, they didn't want to. The same happened with photography. This is a digital camera, uh, but let's talk about film cameras, right? Back in the day when film cameras first came out, this is a beast, right? I'll show you, this is my baby here. Uh, when these film cameras first came out, I don't know if it's focusing, right? Um, Back, back, back in the origins of photography. People had to develop their own film, right? So that was complete control. Not only did you have to understand a little bit of composition, about composition, the science of optics and the cameras, uh, a little bit of chemistry too, right? For the development process. Not to where you needed a degree in chemistry, but you had to understand some basic uh, concepts, right? Then uh, the industry changed a little because people were getting their film developed, right? All these houses started developing film and people said, I don't have time for this. They're doing a good job. Let me just send the film in, right? So that's one step of the creative creative process that was removed from the creative, from the photographer. In this case, photography, right? Because we're a photography channel. So things kept happening, kept happening, right? We used to focus our lenses manually, right? Um, focus our lenses manually. Then with film cameras, autofocus lenses came out. And that was huge. People started buying you know, I have one camera from Canon that's a film camera with a, an autofocus uh, frame, body. Well, sports photographers will swear by that and say, I, 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 couldn't, I, I couldn't really do my job well. Paparazzi photographers will say, oh my God, this made my life so much easier, right? Point and shoot instead of, you know, trying to get, I, sometimes I miss my shots because of that, right? Trying to focus things. So we changed the industry for the better, right? No doubt. But it took one step away one more step away from the creative process. Then these things came out. Digital cameras, right? With a sensor instead of film. Now you can take a picture and you can look and not have to worry so much about whether the lighting was right. You could just snap a picture and then you can fine tune as you went. One step less in the creative process, right? So <clears throat> it happened over many decades and it happened to the point where different generations experienced each of these changes little by little, right? So when I got into photography, I was already paying to get my film developed, right? So I missed that whole first thing where people were forced to develop. Now, I could have experimented and that was fine, but I did it for me and to learn, uh, but I didn't have to, right? Then the whole manual uh, focus went to autofocus. Well, there was a generation of kids that grew up with autofocus cameras. They never had to manually focus anything. That's all they knew. In terms of their creativity, they were still being creative because they were still shooting film. 
Then another generation came with digital cameras. And to them, you know, the displays weren't so good in the back, uh, low megapixels. Uh, they still had to do a lot of fine tuning in Photoshop and Lightroom. They still felt like they were being creative. But these things have gotten so good now, especially if you put this thing on automatic, you don't have to think, right? It's going to get to the point where artificial intelligence, you can see it on phones already, where it recommends that you center a certain way. Even cameras are going to, you know, dissect the scene and analyze it and say, maybe you should put the camera here instead of there, right? We're going to see that. Mark my words. But all this to say that the creative process has been dwindling away from us little by little. And here we are um, with an awesome digital camera and people are starting to go back to LPs, back to manual transmissions, back to all these things, including mixing their own paint and back to film cameras. So the first step, right? We, talk about, we talked about all these things, right? What, what would lean us towards going back to film? So it's a little more controlling the, our creative process, right? So I've seen it in steps myself. I have, for example, this beast, right? It's a 102 megapixel camera and, and I have other cameras, but I started buying the Fuji lenses because they're phenomenal, right? And they resolve 102 megapixels, sharpest things I've ever worked with in my life, these lenses. But I started to ask myself, you know, I don't want to buy every Fuji lens for this camera. And there are lenses I don't have. What if I experiment with like a medium format lens from the 70s or 80s or even 90s? It was still made for a medium format camera, so it's got to resolve a lot of megapixels on, on a film, right? If you want to look at it that way, um, high fidelity film. Very, very, very uh, sharp film, right? Uh, image. So what if I bought one of those lenses for like $300 and in excellent condition and I put it on this camera with an adapter and I did, I did just that. And what I noticed was, wow, the pictures look different because the coatings on those lenses were different. And that was the first step for me, putting manual focus lenses from a different era on these new digital cameras. And I started doing, buying the adapters for all my digital cameras so I can use these lenses and get a different look. And it does look like it's shot a little bit back in the 70s, 80s. These lenses have a yellow hue, yellow green hue. Now, I don't want that in every picture, right? Uh, there are some pictures I want with this digital sensor because I want it to be identical to what I'm seeing. And that's what these things have become experts at and ultra sharp. But if I'm just putzing around, walking around town and I want to capture something with a little character, yeah, that manual focus lens on this digital camera, beautiful, beautiful. So that was the first step for me. Then after doing that for a little while, I said, what if I took that manual focus lens and I put it on a manual camera, a film camera, no more digital. That's even going to be more authentic. So that sparked me, got, you know, my, my film camera out, bought a couple of other film cameras, right? Medium format, this Pentax, and then uh, another Pentax, which is a 35 millimeter. And I'm looking at different cameras, even a four by five negative, right? A large format. Um, I don't know that I'll ever do eight by 10, but definitely four by five. I'm already looking at a camera for that. And so here we are. You know, I'm looking at scanners. What scanner am I going to use for the negative? Because it's the creative process. Is it a pain in the butt? Well, I wouldn't do it if I was making money off of it and I was doing weddings this way, but unless I got paid really well to do it. But definitely for a couple of shoots, I want to, I want to shoot some portraits of my family, black and white film, uh, portrait film from Kodak, uh, really, you know, loyal to the skin tones. That's going to be fantastic. So I'm already thinking, you know, I'm going to scan these negatives, put them into Photoshop, and then I can print them at my own leisure. <clears throat> I can have some of these printed professionally if I want really big ones, right? So many options. All along the way, the creative process is still there. I got to pull out a light meter, although this camera does have a light meter built in. If you want really, you know, uh, faithful work with light, a light meter is always more helpful. A light meter, film, you can't see what you're shooting. You're praying that it's, everything's coming out okay. Send the negative away to be developed. If it's color, I might, I might do color later, but black and white is what I'm doing now. Uh, I'll develop my own black and white negative color. I'm probably going to send away for now. Uh, and then I'll scan all this in and, and it's fantastic. And then I have a little more even control in Photoshop and Lightroom and other tools in terms of touching up the picture so that they look a little authentic from those days, right? So it scans the negative in authentically. Um, control all the way through end to end. Whereas this, I started to feel I was giving up a lot of control. Do I still enjoy this? I still need it. Forget enjoy. I still need it. There are things that I don't want to think about 
focusing, right? Kids running around. Uh, there are times I just, I don't want to deal with it. If I go on a, on a hike and I'm just going to take one camera and one or two lenses, it's going to be a digital camera and two lenses. Street photography, eh, it depends, right? Um, I guess it depends on how rushed I am that day. If I want to take my time and manual focus and give a little character to the pictures, or if I'm rushing and I need to get this done in a couple of hours and I'm going into a new city, it'll be my Canon M6 Mark II with an autofocus lens and I'm going to shoot it, you know, at a hidden level here, uh, discreet little camera, because this is not discreet. You pull this out, put it in somebody's face and they're going to say, dude, did you just snap a picture of me? So the first level for me was going through this manual lens on a digital camera and then manual lens on a, on a, on a you know, film camera, right? So here I am. I think that the second step here is just what I was talking about, control. The same reason for the stick shift and just the utter utter control right and this is kind of the same thing it's not really two steps it's it's just me describing how i went from just shooting fully digital and i shot film for 19 years let me get that out of the way but here i am shooting fully digital now and i walk my way through little by little to full control again right so what's the progression that took us from the film days where everything was uh, controlled by us where are we now well i wrote a couple of things down because this is my memory anyway we went from a fully manual camera right with film and manual focus. We then went to autofocus, as I just mentioned, right? Uh, still film, but autofocus. Then we went to digital cameras, right? And we have the ability of putting manual focus lenses on these, but for the most part, they're autofocus. Now we have AI, artificial intelligence, coming into these cameras already, and it's gonna be even more so in the future. You have to ask yourself at one point, is the, photog is the photographer gonna be needed? This, we're on already 100 megapixels. When cameras are at two or 300 megapixels, five or 600 megapixels, because it's only a matter of time, right? Um, you put a camera with a wide enough with a wide enough lens on, it can select what it wants to do, and then you can just crop in and still have a 40 megapixel sh image, right? Uh, shot, I was going to say, so image. Um, and then the camera can pick composition. So you put this thing on a tripod, and then you can just walk away and go camp. And then it'll look for different times of day when the, the, the beautiful gold skies and, and the morning blues and it'll just do the work for you. So do we want to get there? We can, right? I'm sure a, a, um, uh, an advertising company wouldn't mind doing that, right? Why not? You can put something up, you know, the, the, the photographer can go camp out and edit some stuff that he's done in the past, right? The previous day or she's done. And, and then the, the camera will take care of what it's going to focus on and what it's going to shoot. And then at the end of that day, take the camera down and leave, right? Leave the mountain. And then the next day you edit. So you're paying the photographer to do two things, edit pictures while the camera's shooting. Yes, there's, a, there's going to be a need for all of this. But as a creative person, I don't want to do that all the time. And let's face it, keeping film around has kept many people creative. It's bringing me back to a more creative process. It's letting my creative juices flow. Um, I'm already thinking about how am I gonna scan this? Uh, what kind of film do I wanna buy? What kind of effects do I want? High saturation in colors? Do I want you know, high contrast or do I want really light contrast in my black and whites or in my color? Uh, do I want different hues? Oh my gosh, so many options. Not just one film company. There's Ilford and Kodak and Fuji and blah, blah, blah. Uh, they just keep going, right? Um, it's fantastic. It's part of the creative process. You may take a trip, shoot it with a film, come back and say, oh, I don't really like the way this came out. I would have preferred the film I've already shot, but I heard this was good. Am I going to have to take another trip? Hell, that's what life's... Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Heck, that's what life's about. It's about taking these chances, right? That's what makes us creative. And then we come back and analyze and learn. There's no mistake. It's just a different type of photography. And then, of course, there's uniqueness. The uniqueness of owning something. I've talked about this before, that not everybody owns anymore, right? Not everybody has a film camera. Not everybody can drive a manual transmission. The joke's about the new generations can't steal my car because if they get in the car, they're not going to be able to drive it. It's a manual transmission. Um, it's funny, but there's a reality to that, right? There are people that look at, you know, kids that come here, look at the turntable and say, how do you put a disc on that? And I'm like, it's not a disc, it's an LP. They don't know, kids don't know, right? Uh, and then I pop everything up for them. I power on the uh, amplifiers and receivers and, and the turntable and I pull out an LP and I clean it. And they're like, oh, 
and the sound comes through a needle uh, that's a diamond and it hits plastic and it vibrates and they're like, I've never seen anything like this, right? It's fantastic. So that's what we're doing with film now, right? We're at that point where we're going back to film, letting chemicals develop film instead of computers and it's just a wonderful, wonderful creative process. So why do I say it's coming back strong? Well, reason number one, back in the day, most of the photography I did that was film related, I sent away because I was from that generation, right? And that was a big part of the people I knew and still know, they were still sending it away because it was just too convenient. Now what I'm finding is that people are wanting to develop their own negatives, at least the negatives. Some people are developing their own prints too, but they want to develop their own negatives and then scan them in and keep them in the computer and then print some of those out. So more people are, are, are developing negatives than I knew when I was growing up. The other reason, number two, in those days, film cameras were getting expensive because those were the times and they were in demand. My Canon F1 went up to two grand. I know I bought it for, my parents gave it to me as a gift. It was 580 bucks, the body alone. By the time my girlfriend, when I was in college and bought one, she paid almost two grand for that camera. So the camera was a workhorse and it, it was, you know, the last solid monster that Canon put out in the film days. And Nikon had the F3. And these cameras were just manual focus monsters, right? And I had mine for 19 years and shot film with it and went everywhere with it. And um, if we never went digital, that camera would still probably be sold today. It's and, and made, I mean, you know, because it, it's just, it did the job well. There was no need, you know, there was no need for computers. These things are computers, right? Um, how many pages in this menu? Like 15 to 20 pages, right, on a menu to adjust just about everything. It's a computer. In those days with these manual cameras, that wasn't around. It was just a film. You had the ISO of the film and then the aperture and the shutter speed. That was it. And you could play with uh, aperture comp uh, compensation, shutter compensation, I guess. Well, what do we call it? Um, I just lost the word. Um, so those are, those are the reasons I think it's coming back strong because people can now, the third reason is people can, uh, sorry, the second reason, people can now afford these, right? That Canon, the one that I, I have that I paid 500, well, my parents paid 580, that went up to 2000, you can buy it now for 400 bucks. So cheaper than when, than, you know, when I was buying it new. And, and they're still in fantastic shape. Some people bought them, used them a little, put them away, they still have them in boxes. And they're selling these cameras some of those simpler cameras, you can get them for, I just bought a Pentax for 70 bucks. Let me show it to you. Look at the condition of this camera. It's an excellent condition camera. Let me see if it's gonna focus this thing. It's in beautiful shape, right? It's an M42 mount, so you screw lenses on it. I've already got two lenses, I'm gonna buy a third. I can't wait to use this thing. It's 35 millimeter film equivalent. This is what I mean, $70. $70. I don't even know what this costs new, but $70. So people can get into film photography. The lens was about $100. Uh, for under $200, a lens and a camera, and then all you have to do is buy film and take pictures and send it away. And if you want to scan it yourself, you can. If you don't, then have it developed. But at least you're not seeing in the back, right? There's no, there's no LCD uh, panel. Uh, you're being creative. Let me know what you think. Uh, if this video was enjoyable, please give it a like below. It keeps the channel going, keeps my energy going. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. I am doing more film videos. I am going to shoot this Pentax medium format. I am going to take you on a walk with me. We're going to shoot together. We're going to see what the quirks are, uh, getting back into film, if it's going to flow easily. And, and then I'll go through the process of sending in the first few rolls, but we'll scan them together uh, in the future. That'll be another video. When I develop my own, own negatives, that's gonna be a video. So I'm gonna walk you guys through this so that if you feel like getting into film photography, this is only the beginning. I'm doing a review of this camera and to do the review of the camera, we have to go shoot it, right? But like I said, the first one, I'm gonna send away and then uh, when the negatives come back, I'll, I'll look to scan them in. I might even do the first pictures, let them do them just to see what I get back uh, so that when I do scan them in, I can compare, right? Uh, but anyway, Stay tuned because we're gonna do more of this. Plus we got some more product reviews coming in the digital world. I'm still, I'm still a digital shooter. I still enjoy it a great deal. And I love the flexibility, right? Less creativity, more flexibility. Uh, this one has less flexibility, a ton more creativity. So it just depends what we wanna do with our life. Sometimes it's good to just play with a little bit of everything, but stick around. We're gonna have a lot of fun together.
I love you guys. Thank you for sharing your time with me. I will see you in the next video. Ciao for now.